We've got the founder of Budget, Ruben Ismailian. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ruben Ismailian uh, and I'm the founder of Budget. I'm very excited to be here uh, and tell you about what we're working on. Um, a little bit about my background, um, I spent about six years in financial data sales management um, and support, uh, recovering from the corporate world um, and, and really building budget these days. Uh, I'm working with my colleague Christian uh, who is uh, our design guru, he's got about 10 years of experience building all sorts of really cool things. and. Uh, you know, excited to show you what we're working on. Is this better? Perfect. So, um, what is Budget? Budget is a new personal finance service that intelligently organizes your bills, spending habits, and savings goals. 69%. That's the percentage of Americans without $1,000 in savings. Think about that for a second. That's an astounding percentage uh, in, in the wealthiest country in the world. Um, and if you look at the numbers, this is not just a rich or poor issue. Um, it, it affects people across all income levels. Now, we can argue the extent of low savings rates or stagnant wages for the unwillingness or inability of Americans to, to actually sock away money. But the, the reality is that if we go deeper, uh, things aren't looking much better. Um, we really struggle with our finances. 63% uh, of Americans are unable to pass a basic financial literacy uh, test, which measures things like um, do you understand what, uh, how interest works or, or how credit works? 47% um, of Americans are unable to come up with $400 for an emergency without having to pawn something or borrow money. 71% of us are concerned about everyday expenses. For millennials, as Cole pointed out a little earlier, those numbers are actually worse. Um, now, I'm not telling all of this for you to scare you all into voting for me in November. Um, the reason I'm bringing all of this up uh, is to talk about the role of technology in this and, and the role that technology has played and can play to improve the situation. So um, the, the main way in which financial technology in particular has um, helped kind of worsen this problem is, is by leading us towards this uh, cashless world, right? Um, we went from being able to hand our money to people, to uh, write a check, to swipe a card. Uh, now we can tap our money. Now we can, we can uh, speak our money away through, you know, Amazon's tool. Etc. The whole industry is moving us towards, um, you know, less payment friction, easier transactions. Meanwhile, our spending is becoming more automated than ever. Um, some of you probably have some of these subscriptions or have used them. Um, some of these charge you on a monthly basis a set amount. Uh, others, such as Uber, uh, are essentially uh, uh, really hyper convenient. But it's, but furthermore, uh, they disconnect us with our money. Uh, we, we don't really understand anymore, like we don't touch the, the money anymore and, and, and more and more services are leading us towards, uh, towards um, not really being on top of our finances. So how do we deal with this today? Uh, there's a few approaches. Um, we can balance checkbooks or carry envelopes of cash, the, the grandma method if you will. Um, we can maintain a super awesome spreadsheet that tracks all of our spending and I know a lot of people do that and it works for them. Uh, we can make enough money that it doesn't matter. Uh, we can act on our best impulses and hope things work out. Um, uh, for the last 10 years or so, I found myself in various of these buckets um, and uh, I've also tried pretty much every app out there uh, with mixed success. And one of the things that I learned more than anything is that uh, personal finance in this hyper-technologically advanced, uh, over-complicated finances world uh, requires a new approach. The new approach uh, is why I built Budget um, and it's, it's grounded on, on three principles. Number one, uh, user privacy is not a commodity. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to build a product um, that, that has the user in mind rather than the market in, marketer in mind. Uh, number two, personal finance should be personalized. Uh, for people who are reaching out for help or, or, or trying to use a service that helps them uh, understand and, and manage their money, um, asking them to answer, answer surveys or give us more, more data um, is not enough. What we do is we, we take 90 days of history uh, and combine that with people's goals and actually create a product that's ready to use out of the box. And then lastly, um, you know, web scraping for data is not enough. And what, what do I mean by web scraping? It's the idea that we go around our bank to get to our data rather than working with the bank and getting the data directly from the source. Web scraping is, is primarily how almost every financial aggregator uh, and, and consequently every financial app uh, gets its data today. 
Um, so why budget? Um, because we, we bypass those aggregators and, and work to get the data directly from the banks, or almost directly from the banks, rather. Uh, we're able to get rich trans transactional data that's quick, reliable, and secure. Um, our algorithms are able to identify bills and subscriptions and neatly organize them. Um, because we know your bills and subscriptions, we're able to take paychecks and actually allocate them to the things that matter. Um, and then uh, we, we have an innovative calendar interface that actually keeps you in the loop in a visual way rather than showing you a list of, of, of transactions or spreadsheets or tables and notifications that are actionable and not nagging. Um, as <laughs> Thank you. So. Uh, any questions? Can you go back to the slide that you just had up? I, one of my questions was going to be about the competitors in your space, so can you just elaborate a little bit on how you're differentiating yourselves yep. um, from, from those competitors? So uh, as I mentioned, it's, uh, it's a really competitive space. I think most people know that, 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 that I've played with these apps. Uh, for me, uh, that actually indicates that the problem is not solved, right? That there are so many new entrants all the time. Uh, obviously, you have Mint, uh, and they've been, they've been very successful. Um, but by and large, um, you know, the way we differentiate ourselves is we think of ourselves as a more premium product. Um, you know, we do not monetize user data. Uh, that's something we don't believe in. Uh, we want to build a product for the user. Um, as a result, um, or as a, as a cause of that, part of it is also is that we're relying on this modern bank, more modern bank sync technology, which allows us to get data directly from the banks. This limits the amount of banks we can support, so we're not able to support as many banks as a Mint, which can, I think they claim about 16,000 banks. Uh, instead, we support uh, the top 12 of uh, U.S. banks, which, which covers most of our customers, and we're getting much better data as a result of it. And because we're getting much better data, uh, we, we're, we believe we're offering a, a superior product uh, to, to, to the competitors who are trying to grab everybody. Is that helpful? So I see a designer, and I see a financial guy, but I don't see where your technological expertise comes into play, and, uh, and your ability to distribute on platforms. How far along are you in your implementation, and how far do you think you're actually... Uh, a, how diversified do you want to make your piece in the market? Thank you for letting me go through all of my slides after my time expired. Um, that's a great question. Uh, so, as I mentioned, I'm recovering from the cor corporate world. Uh, when I moved to Dallas a little over a year ago, uh, I actually went through a, a, a coding boot camp myself. Uh, I had done programming many, many years ago. Uh, got back into it. Um, so, right now, the, from a technological perspective, uh, Christian and I are, are, are the technology team. He's, he's focused mostly on the front-end work. Uh, I, I've built pretty much the entire back-end so far. Um, we're certainly, at some point, you know, after we probably raise some money, we'll look to expand that, that technology. More importantly, I'm looking for um, sort of more data science expertise. Um, but so far, what we've built is we launched our uh, sort of first iteration of the product to, to a few, a few uh, sort of uh, Sourcing feedback uh, last month. Uh, we're hoping to complete a, an MVP at the end of this month, launch a beta version in November, uh, raise our first financing round at, at the end of December, uh, and then uh, hopefully things go well launch in, in Q1. Uh, in terms of platforms, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're built on Heroku right now, uh, which, which is serving our purposes 20 at this time. Uh, we'll certainly explore alternatives if, if we feel like the time comes for that. Uh, yeah, so you touched on a good point about a lot of the apps like Mint and Level Money that are really slow with aggregating that data. So I was just wondering what are some of the specific tactics that you guys have taken with the top 12 banks to expedite that transfer of data to the app? So uh, the API that we're uh, partnering with is, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Plaid. Uh, yeah, so, so, so they're a, a niche player. Uh, they just uh, closed $45 million with uh, uh, Goldman Sachs Investment Partners. Um, they're investing heavily in uh, so essentially expanding relationships with banks instead of getting the data from web scraping. So they're able to actually get it directly with feeds from the banks. Um, and, and we're seeing data uh, several times a day for each user um, and, and sometimes even faster. Hey, um, okay, so if this is focused on budgeting and saving money, uh, the people that probably have the biggest trouble with budgeting are people that don't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. uh, free, thousand. So as a premium app, how are you dealing with that hurdle that people have to get over to pay to then help them save money? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, like I said, the, the, the market is really large. I think um, to be able to offer a premium product, um, you know, we're, we're probably targeting a sort of a Netflix range price. Um, you know, we'll probably start more in the uh, probably middle to upper middle income 
customers at first, um, and then there's a, a few other ideas that, that we have in terms of partnering with, uh, with with banks, partnering with actually colleges, and being able to offer this service, um, in, you know, in tandem with other services that folks receive. Um, but yeah, it's something that you know, I, I think uh, good tools like this should be should be available and, and and free or nearly free at least. But what I don't believe is that we should be giving people free tools and then taking them for a ride in terms of in terms of marketing, which is really what the big players in this space end up doing. They, they abuse it, they abuse that position in the market that way. So maybe I missed this, but how do you plan to make a profit? Uh, so we're going to start off with a subscription model, um, essentially, uh, you know, eight to ten dollars a month uh, for uh, for users to to, uh, to 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 gain value. And if they're not getting, you know, if, if we're able to deliver the value, we think uh, that 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 we're able to do, um, you know, we believe that people will, will pay for that. There, uh, Wineab is another competitor of ours, and, and they've demonstrated that that you're able to make a, if, you, if you make a really interesting product in this space, people will pay a subscription fee for it. All right. <laughs> Great, thank you.